Hi everyone, this is Fanola Howard. This is How Great Marketing Works and we are on episode, what are we? Episode 15 of Ask Fanola How on this wonderful, wonderful day that was forecast to be raining, but I am not complaining. So today, um, got some really, two really good questions from entrepreneurs. And again, and I'm always saying this to you, but I really truly want you to believe me that this is the most normal questions that I'm sharing with you here. And I want to do that so that you know you're not alone on this journey, okay? So the question, the title of today's Ask Fanola How is about how do I separate how people see me from what I really want to be? Okay, and I want to, I'm going to go into depth about that particular question because it's a little bit longer how it's expressed. But I suppose I want to start this conversation around um, this idea of this process of be being an entrepreneur and becoming an entrepreneur is a movable feast. So when you enter into business in the first place, you know that you are starting on a change process and that change never, never ends. So if you know that and take comfort in the fact that this is learning, this is growing, this is changing, I will change. So how people see me will also change and will also need to change if it's not keeping pace with you and you need to match that, okay? So um, entrepreneurship is change. Entrepreneurship is growth. And what we enter into the marketplace with is not what we'll end up doing in a year's time, in two years time. So go with the flow, allow it to happen, allow the market to teach you, allow you to refine what you do. The cleverest thing that you can do for your business is to see what the market is trying to teach you. We talked a little bit about that last week. So the issue or the challenge faced by the entrepreneurs who shared their thoughts with us this week is around uh, something that I discussed in Ask Fanola How episode two, when we talked about the three challenges that every customer faces, or sorry, every entrepreneur faces. And every entrepreneur faces three key, key challenges. The first one is identity. And I really want you to learn these because you'll start to see the pattern in yourself as you grow. First one is identity. Second one is the systems to help you scale. And the third one is the people that will help you scale. And then when you get to that point, you will start again because identity will be addressed and be faced again. So let's, sh let me share with you two um, questions that have been shared generously uh, by entrepreneurs that we can discuss here today. So the first one is, and think about yourself in this space because this person's not alone here, okay? So how do I separate how people see me from what I really want to be? Whoa, so strong. That's not what I want to be known for. But, that the ch but then the challenge is, is that what other people want? I think I've gotten branded as a, and I'm just not saying what their profession is, but you can insert your own profession here. I think I've got, gotten branded as a, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not what my dream is. It's not my purpose. And so I'm trying to get clear on that. I'm always there, almost there. But how do I change people's thoughts? I see this profession as the past business and this is the new business. So moving forward, the requests that are coming in are around the old business. So I could get pulled into that, but I don't want to get pulled into that. So isn't it interesting? It's about, it's not my purpose, it's not my dream. Uh, how do I change people's thoughts? It's a really powerful question, okay? So think about that. And then there's another question that has come in and they're kind of aligned and they're kind of at opposite ends on the, of the spectrum here. So the first one is about someone who's being perceived as the old them and she wants to change it and wants to make sure she's in, a, in line with what her customers want but she wants to move because that's her purpose. And this other uh, entrepreneur says, people are misinterpreting my tagline. And this is a tagline that he's created and feels very strongly about it. People are misinterpreting my tagline. Do I need to dump it? It's a catchy phrase, I like it and I don't wanna dump it. So always it's about, 
our relationship with our identity in connection with our customers because obviously we want to be in line with our customers but we also want to be in line with our own purpose okay so let me reflect on a couple of things for you to think about here okay and and these are all revolving around how people see us in our business or how people see the business and see what the business does so when i talk about first person about how the how I see me or how you see you in your business. I mean your business, not you as a person, okay? I'm just trying to shortcut. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to say to you that, and we kind of talked about this at the start was, this is a movable feast. And when you, I want you to remember that when you start your business, that's only the start. Things change throughout the whole journey that your, cost, that your business goes on, whether you're in business for five years, 10 years, 50 years, your business will change. So the starting point, who you are at the start and who your business is at the start is completely different to who you will be later, even in a year. And I promise you this, if you are on a conscious path to grow your business, then your product will change within the first year and will change possibly every year. Definitely when the first year, your product will change, your customer will change, how you speak about yourself will change, everything will change if you want to grow. By its very nature, growth means you will grow, which means by its very nature, you will change. Growth is change, okay? So don't worry so much that you're changing. In fact, embrace the fact that you're changing because that means you're growing. So the start of your business is only the start of this journey. There is more to come. The second thing I want to say to you, when we are worrying about how people perceive us outside and how we are perceived by our customers and how we're perceived by, uh, our, by the marketplace, what I want to say to you is, you are the navigator in your business. You are the person in control. You are the person at the helm. Now, yes, we have to... Uh, steer the ship of our business or steer our business in such a way that it navigates successfully and profitably through the marketplace. But you are the navigator. You get to decide what you bring to the world. You get to decide what products you bring to the world, who you are in the world, you get to decide. And if you don't seize control and be the navigator in your business, you will meander. You will lose the way, lose your way because you're always looking outside of yourself for confirmation that you're doing the right thing. Yes, there's a place for that and we must make sure there's a place for that. But it's critical that you steer the ship of your business because there are things that you know in your research and what you understand about your business that will take you to the right place because ultimately you must be happy in your own business as well. You need to match your needs, be the navigator of your business with the needs of the marketplace, but only the marketplace that you want, okay? I also, when we're talking about, you know, when you're changing your business and you're growing your business and you're worried about how other people see your business because you've moved, and this is a very, very common thing, what we need to happen, and it's about, you know, because we, let's reflect on what the question was from this entrepreneur. But your responsibility must be to see the dream, to dream the dream of your business first, to see that dream before anyone else does. Because when you embrace that dream, if you second guess yourself all of the time, then you will never truly step into the power of your own business, the, the power that the business can make in the world, the change that it can make in the world. If you don't see the dream for your own business first of where you can truly um, bring change where you can truly serve your customers to the best of your ability. If you don't see that dream first, then how can we? We, if you see your dream first, we will come along with you. We are very adept as customers to understanding what you have to share with us, to understanding what you want to do for us. But you need to guide the way because you're the navigator. You have to see the dream first and you have to embrace it. Now, I'm speaking a lot about this because very, very often people hide in their businesses. They hide what they truly want to be, which means they're hiding their brilliance. 
And I say this quite a lot because it's a marketing piece. It's a, it's a mindset shift in yourself, but it's also if we're marketing ourselves, marketing is about showing your business, showing your potential out there, showing your brilliance. And you must embrace your own brilliance so that we can see it, okay? So you see the dream for your business first, we will catch up. Don't ever worry about that. We do not want to be stuck behind in your past. We want to see the vision for your business for the future, okay? The other thing I want to say to you about this is, this is a messy process. Business is a messy process. Growing a business is a messy process because you will make mistakes. You will do something, it'll work. You will do something else, it will not work. So accept that it's a messy process. Ideally, we would like it to be as smooth a journey as we can for it to be a straight line, but it not, it's not always a straight line. Invariably, it's very, very messy. And one of the reasons I do ask Finola how and share these real life questions from real entrepreneurs is I want you to see that you are not alone in some of these um, doubts that can happen in your business where you second guess yourself and sometimes you can get exhausted by it all. So uh, take heart. It's a messy process. We all know it is. And by talking more about it, we can see the patterns that happen and can change those patterns for a better result. Okay. The other thing that I want to say to you is when you are doing this change in your business and you want to introduce a new product or service, when you make those changes, one of the things that's most important for you is to start to say no to the clients you don't want, to say no to the services you don't want to offer. Sometimes you saying no to doing something for a customer can actually be a better yes for you than a yes ever will be because we must be able to navigate our own journey, serve our clients the best and our customers the best way we can and saying no to the products or services that we don't want to provide is often the best way to do that, okay? Next one on the subject of taglines, which was our second question. Let me reiterate that question for you. And it was, people are misinterpreting my tagline. Do I need to dump it? It's a catchy phrase, I like it. So I don't want to dub, dump it. And so just a very quick one on taglines. I like taglines. Taglines are a wonderful device to allow you to tell another layer of the story. So very often when someone builds a brand and the business name is often not very self-explanatory for what it does. And what a tagline does, even if you don't attach it to your logo, allows you to ground the business in a pure explanation of what it's here for. It just adds this other beautiful layer into the conversation before you even start to have that conversation. And I do recommend it for every business to consider even if they're not using it directly aligned with their own branding. But to have it as a summary of who you are is a very powerful thing. When people don't get your tagline, one of the things I've noticed is uh, sometimes people don't get your tagline uh, as an explanation for what you do. And Sometimes that's because perhaps the language is not that clear or not that simple and you're being too, a little bit too cryptic. But often what I found when someone doesn't understand your tagline or your positioning for what you do is because they can't connect with it. They can't feel you in it. And if they can feel you, they can fall in love with you. If they can feel you, they can get to understand you. They get to do that know, like and trust thing. So I remember saying to somebody before that this tagline that you have is actually something that can be very emotive, but you're not speaking very emotion, emotively about it. Sometimes the clarity your customer needs to understand who you are is to see your passion for what you do. And when they see your passion for what you do, they can feel it. And as we said last week on the beautiful quote by Bill Burnback, is you can say the right thing about a product and nobody will listen. You've got, it a way, you've got to say it in a way that they feel it in their gut or nothing will happen. It's the same with how you position yourself, how you talk about yourself. You are your own product after all. So let us feel the passion for what you do in how you explain what you do. 
and your customers will come with you. Okay? So, my overriding message for you is, sometimes you need to believe first before your customer will. And that I think is the core message for you to get out of today. You believe first and your customers will come the rest of the way with you. This has been Ask Finola How, and I'm Finola Howard. Looking forward to talking to you next week. Send me some questions or comments. I love to answer them. Take care.